Hi everyone, this is Ben with Dream Factory, and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to use Dream Factory's built-in MySQL database. So the first thing to notice is that when you go to bitnami.com, if you've done your installation of Dream Factory uh, from the Bitnami installers, once you've installed, here I'm on my local host, you'll see MySQL database in your list of services. And if you want to know more about it, you can just click on it, and here's the API name, you can change that if you want your label, your description, and some configuration data that's pre-populated. So all of this is built in, ready to go, and pre-configured with the installation. So what's cool about that is that you can just start using the built-in MySQL database uh, directly without doing anything. It's just ready to go. The other thing to point out, though, is that if you have uh, another MySQL database running somewhere, your own, maybe it already exists, or there's some type of other SQL database that you'd like to connect to, you can also do that. And really the functionality and what we're going to show today is really identical, regardless of what remote external SQL database you use. But if you're just starting fresh, just go ahead and start interacting with the local MySQL database and learn how the API works. So to do that, I'm going to show a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to do is hop into schema and I'm going to select this local MySQL database. Now if I select it here, there's obviously nothing because it's a fresh database pre-installed, but nothing yet created in terms of tables. So what I'm going to do is just uh, upload a simple table. Um, it's very easy to do. You can do it directly from the API docs. You can do it from the command line using um, the API. Basically, the schema itself is RESTful, so you can very easily uh, upload JSON uh, and get your schema created. And that's what I'm going to show here. So what I'll show is um, the way to do that here is just to click the Upload JSON button this shows an example, so this is a simple list of uh, uh, to-do records that is provided, which shows you how to create a table. Um, if I clicked upload, that would create that schema automatically, but what I'm going to do instead is go in here and just uh, create a simple context table, like a bunch of our other examples with different types of databases like MongoDB and SQLite. Same paradigm. So that's our resource. We have contact, label contact, plural name for the table is contacts. And three simple fields, an ID, a name, which is a string, <clears throat> and a phone number, which is also a string. So I'm going to copy that in and go in here and just uh, paste that, and then I'm going to upload it. And you'll see confirmation that that was created. And if we refresh the browser here, uh, we should confirm that that table was correctly created. And it does show up in the list. And as you'll see, <clears throat> you can also manipulate the schema as well once you've created your table. Uh, directly in the user interface. So I can add fields, uh, you can drop tables, and obviously create tables like we just sh uh, showed there. So we've got something to work with, a simple contacts table with an ID, name, and phone number. So that's a useful start. Uh, and let's hop into the API docs and see what else we can do. So if we'll go here to MySQL. And this API is really the bread and butter of um, of, of SQL databases. It works the same way whether you're using MySQL or Postgres or Oracle or any of them. Uh, it provides a number of different endpoints that you can use to uh, work with the schema, work with the data, uh, call stored procedures, call functions, a whole bunch of things. And in this short tutorial I'm just going to show the basics, very very basic. So we've got our database and we created our table. We, by the way we could have posted our table um, instead of from the schema tab we could have done it directly by the API here. Uh, but it's already created, so what we're going to do is go ahead and look at some of the uh, records. And so we'll look at all of the actions down here. Some obvious ones we we'll want to try out is get and create records. Now, of course, since it's empty, we'll go down and confirm that nothing's there. And we'll do a quick get on the contact table and try it out. And of course, there's nothing there. That's expected. So let's post some data and then retrieve some data with this API. So we'll go back here and do a quick post. So if we go down here, it's very simple. We're going to post JSON. You can also post XML. Um, we're going to give it a table name. And a nice uh, convenience mechanism here is to just look at and expand the size of this. And you can see how the body looks for any of these API calls just by clicking on model schema, clicking in this area, and it'll populate it. And instead of typing all of this information in, I'm, I'm just going to actually remove this go back to my text editor and just get a couple simple key value pairs. So this is going to actually insert two records in JSON format. So a resource array with key value pairs of name and phone number, two records there, like our other examples, very simple. Paste that in, 
and post it. And hopefully we'll get back success. So two records were created with ID one and two. And you can see the API call here is the whole path um, v2 or API v2 MySQL is the API name underscore tables, the notation for the post to a table, and then the name of that table is there. So that's all we did. And now we have two records. And you can confirm that very easily in a couple of ways I'll show you. First is let's do a get and retrieve a couple of those records. And the easiest way to do that is just put in the table name. We're going to ignore all of these other parameters for the moment, just get our data back. And there are the two records that we posted a moment ago. There are a bunch of uh, parameters that you can pass in your API calls. I'll show a very simple one. We have extensive documentation on this at wiki.dreamfactory.com, which explains how all of these parameters work. Uh, so let's just say that we would just want to filter and uh, get back records um, with the first name equals uh, Ben. And that'll return that. You can uh, do any number of filters. You can do limits. You can do pagination with orders. You can group data, uh, do group by, aggregation, sum, min, max, count, etc. Offsets. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. I'm not going to get into it in this tutorial, uh, but that's it. And then the other thing you can do is just uh, look at the data in the user interface. So remember, we created those two records. We'll see them now, whereas before, they would not have shown up. And so you can actually manipulate the data in here as well. So any application you build is posting and getting data straight through this API. It's very, very simple. MySQL is ready to use and ready to go. And that's it. So hopefully this is a good introduction to MySQL. We've got a lot more tutorials online, so check those out as well. Thanks.